Hey everybody, it's Chris and I'm back to do another pour with you today. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, a couple of months ago while I was um, kind of surfing the net and looking at some of the Facebook groups that I'm in, I had stumbled across a beach glitter tumbler. And since we're getting married next month and um, we're getting married on the beach, I thought it might be kind of cool to make some glitter tumblers for my friends who are joining us down there. So I kind of started to explore. I started to watch YouTube videos. Um, I joined a couple of other Tumblr groups on Facebook and just tried to learn as much as I possibly could about this particular art form. And since I already do resin on coasters and trivets and things like that, it didn't seem like it was much of a jump for me to kind of try my hand at glitter tumblers. But I also saw a really cool idea, which I'm not going to tell you the whole thing. I'm just gonna, today we're just gonna pour on the tumbler and then I may do a video to finish it and show you um, the rest of the idea. But um, this might be for a certain someone who would probably watch this video. So I don't wanna give up away the whole thing. But today we're gonna pour on a tumbler with acrylic paint and then I will do another video and show you how I finish it with resin and um, some other things that I'm kind of thinking I may do to it. So we're starting with a, this is actually a 20 ounce skinny tumbler um, made by Hogg and it's H-O-G-G. -G. Um, I purchased these from Stainless Steel Depot and I bought quite a few of them. Um, and as I said, I've been looking at this for a couple of months. So um, what I've done to prep the cup is I lightly sanded it to get some of the finish off of the stainless steel. And then um, it was washed with dish soap and then I dried it. And then I've also wiped it down with an alcohol wipe just to make sure that there isn't any oils um, from my hands in cleaning them and such still on the cup so that the paint will stick to it. Now, I do know that um, when I get ready to do glitter tumblers, I'm actually going to prime this with paint just because it will have glitter on it and I want something um, as a base coat so that um, the silver's not showing through. But since we're just gonna pour paint on this, I didn't prime this with anything else. And I've got a 16 ounce clear cup here. So I'm just gonna put that in the bottom of it um, just to kind of help create a stand, if you will. And then I have a 12 by 12 canvas over here. So some of you who might uh, be watching Mixed Media Girl, she actually did a tumbler a few days ago um, which I was really bummed when I saw it because I thought, oh gosh, now everybody's going to think I copied her. But I swear that I started this process two months ago when I started doing this. What she did do was put a canvas underneath the cup to catch the paint, which I thought, you know what, that is a great idea because the colors that I'm using today would probably make a really great canvas as well. So it's kind of a dual purpose and that way it wastes less paint. Um, this is a stand that Jim had made for me. It's just out of PVC. So after the cup is done, I'm just gonna move it over to here so that it can dry. You can see that it'll sit nice and level and it'll be a place for it to dry so that I don't have to worry about the edge of it, um, the bottom edge of it getting all icky. So um, that is my plan is to move this over to the rack once I get done pouring it and then we can work on um, the canvas. So I'm just gonna set this over here to the side and I'm gonna move this kind of in your view, if you will. So I'm using kind of neutral colors or um, earth tone colors. And um, I kind of am hoping that it has kind of a wood grain effect when I'm done. So I'm going to start off with some warm gray. And then I'm also using raw umber. And this is just gonna be a dirty pour. So I am just squeezing my paints in. Uh, this is, um, I believe orange as an orange from Amsterdam. And I'm also using some Naples yellow as well as burnt umber. And then because I like metallic and because it might be for a boy, I thought I could get by with putting some copper in here. And I don't have a lot, so it's probably good that I don't have a lot. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and top it off with a little bit more warm gray. So I would say I probably have about five to six ounces of paint and hopefully that will be enough to cover the cup as well as the canvas. So we'll find out here. Okay, so I've already got some really cool stuff going on in here. My paints are just mixed with my pouring medium, which is four cups of Floetrol, one cup of glue all, a half a cup of Liquitex pouring medium, and a quarter cup of water. And I mix my paints about one part paint to four parts, three to four parts pouring medium. 
All right, so here's the cup and of paint. And then I've got my cup here ready to go. And I'm just gonna start pouring it down over the top and we'll see what we get. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour all of this paint on here. I know that it's a lot of paint, but since it's just gonna flow down onto the canvas, I think it should work out just fine. And there we go. So I'm just gonna let this flow down the sides a little bit. And I do feel like there's a lot of yellow. So I think I'm actually going to take the cup, put a little more warm gray in there, as well as the medium, or the burnt umber, and the raw umber. And a little bit more of that copper. And I'm gonna pour it down over the side because I feel like there is way too much yellow on here right now. So what this will do is push some of that yellow down and it will get that brown back in there again that I want for the wood grain appearance. <clears throat> That looks so, so much better. I think maybe the Naples yellow is not always a good way to go. And I'm actually gonna tip this cup down here. So I'm just gonna grab a hold of the cup that's supporting the tumbler, just so that I don't have all of that paint on the very bottom of the cup. There we go which also creates a little bit more stuff on the side of it, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna pick this up and I think I'm just gonna kind of tilt this to the side and see if I can show you how this looks. It's quite slippery. Um, let's see if I can show it to you. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna show it to you just yet. I think what I'm gonna do is put it over here on the, since I've got it picked up, I'm gonna put it over here on my little rack and then I will move my camera to show you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that drip and then I'm gonna take the camera and show it to you. Let's go ahead and tilt this little guy around and see what we get with this canvas. It's kind of like a, kind of looks like a ring pour, doesn't it? All right, I'm not sure that we have enough paint to cover. So I'm gonna create a little dam up here so that I can catch some of that paint. And then I'm gonna come down here to the opposite corner and stretch it out a bit. Let's see if I can get you in the frame here. I'm gonna let the weight of the paint come back up here to the middle and then we'll go down to this corner. Sorry, I had smacked the <laughs> I had smacked the cup with the canvas and I was like, oh gosh, that's not even anymore. All right, and then we're gonna come back down here and cover this last corner. So I definitely could have a little bit more paint on here. This is gonna be kind of stretched a little bit thin, but it might be a great painting to do some embellishing with. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can create a little dam down here. And then just go ahead and tip this off of one end to get that corner covered up. I apologize, I'm sure I don't have you in frame. There we go. So just kind of trying to get this guy to cover a little bit. And then I'm gonna go over here and cover this last corner. And I might just kind of help it and pull that paint down over the edge a little bit. Just like so. 
And there we go. Got one more spot here that I'm just gonna touch. Now I'm not gonna worry too much about the edges because I'll just take my palette knife and I can certainly run some paint over there. I've got some paint over here underneath the cup for sure that I can use. And then of course, gravity will also help to bring it down over the edge as well. So as long as I'm over the edge, then I have a much better chance of the gravity or the weight of the paint helping it to go over the edge. So I'm just kind of touching up my corners here. That's actually quite a cool painting, isn't it? I'll bring it up here so you can see a little bit more. A little close up, if you will. It's actually quite pretty, especially for leftover paint. So that's kind of awesome. All right, let me take my camera down and I will show you guys the cup. It's looking actually really cool. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move this over a little bit though because the cup is dripping just very close to that canvas. All right, guys, here is the cup. Let me see if I can kind of get down here so that you can see how cool it is. It definitely looks like wood. I apologize, my um, my studio is like super, um, super messy right now. And as I was trying to figure out like what I was going to show you, I was like, oh my goodness, it is messy in here. Where, what part of the studio can I show you this that's not gonna be a hot mess? But that's all right, you get the idea. So it is showing quite a bit darker on screen than what it is. Um, it is a little bit lighter, but um, I do have my studio lights on because it's getting kind of dark outside. So, um, but it totally looks like wood grain. I love it. Um, yeah, this is gonna be awesome. And then this is the top of it. So you can see that that really looks like wood grain. I am so excited about this, you guys. Okay, so here is the painting. So kind of a bonus. Um, we definitely did not waste much paint at all. Um, here's the plastic underneath the cup where it's dripping. So there's very little paint there. And then you can see even around my plastic, I've kind of dipped into it to fix the sides of it. Um, so we did a cup and a canvas. So a painting and a canvas, or excuse me, so we did a cup and a painting, um, all with that one cup of paint. So definitely did a great job as far as waste goes. Um, we have very minimal waste. All right, guys. So um, there you have it. This is how you would pour acrylic paint on a cup. Um, this was a stainless steel cup. And I'll put the link to the company that I purchased from down below in case you're interested. As I said, I just lightly sanded it, uh, washed it with dish soap and then dried it and then wiped it down with an alcohol wipe to make sure that it was nice and clean. Um, definitely have some very cool wood grain effect on it. Um, so yeah, I know that there's a way that you can also use alcohol inks um, on top of a painted base to create wood grain, but oh my gosh, you guys, I think I'm kind of digging it this way. I don't know that I would want to do that. I kind of love the poured effect. And that's what right in our wheelhouse, right? Because we do acrylic paint pouring. All right, so if you have any questions, um, here's another little look at our painting. I apologize, the lights are in it now. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.